This tutorial will show you how to set up and use PhD guiding software with your astrophysics mount, including optimizing PhD settings for your specific imaging system and seeing conditions. Please note this video is for astrophysics mounts without absolute encoders. If you have an AP mount with absolute encoders, such as the Mach 2 or the AP 1100 or 1600 with the absolute encoder option installed, you should instead watch the companion video on setting up PhD for AP encoder mounts. Before we get started, this tutorial assumes you already have some basics already in place and working. Your astrophysics mount is set up and working properly, including telescope installed and balanced, and the ability to power up all your equipment, and you have a working connection between your mount and your computer, which is typically USB, Ethernet, or Wi-Fi. You have installed the ASCOM platform, the AP ASCOM driver, and optionally, the Astrophysics APCC software. ASCOM and pulse guiding is the preferred method for guiding your mount and what we are covering in this tutorial. You have installed and updated your camera drivers for your guide camera. This is important as PhD software updates are often tied to newer versions of camera drivers and may not work properly if you use older driver versions. You have already correctly configured your astrophysics driver and software so you can connect to your mount and control it via ASCOM from your computer. And you have correctly configured your ASCOM and APCC settings including mount type, date, time, and location. You have installed PHD2 software and have confirmed that you can connect your equipment. Your guide camera is working and focused, and if using an off-access guider, or OAG, it is also parfocal with your imaging camera. And finally, your mount is reasonably well polar aligned. This tutorial does not cover any of these topics, so if you need help with these, please look at other videos or contact Astrophysics. The current software and versions you will need and are covered in this tutorial include the ASCOM platform version 6.5 service pack one or later, the AP version two ASCOM driver using version 5.40.01 or later. If you are using APCC, we recommend version 1.9.3.1 or later standard or professional versions and PhD version 2.6.11 or later. This guiding software is referred to as PhD, PhD2, or OpenPhD. For our purposes, they all refer to the same application. The download link for PhD is here and in this video's description below. Again, it's worth mentioning you should have the latest camera drivers installed to ensure compatibility. Also, please note there is an earlier version of PhD available from Stark Labs, simply referred to as PhD. I know this is a bit confusing, but this is a legacy version that was discontinued in 2012 and is no longer supported. The only version you should be using is available from openphdguiding.org at the links previously mentioned. It's also worth mentioning the current version of PhD is based on Craig Stark's original version of PhD, so we all owe a debt of gratitude to Craig for starting the ball rolling. Finally, you will need to have a few pieces of information ahead of time to set up PhD correctly. You'll need the pixel size of your guide camera expressed in microns or thousandths of a meter. This is typically found on your guide camera's product page. In this tutorial, we will be using a Lodestar Pro, which has a pixel size of 8.3 microns. You will also need your guide telescope focal length. If you are using an off-access guider, the focal length will be your main imaging scope. If you are using a separate guide scope, make sure you have the focal length of the guide scope and not the aperture. An example inexpensive guide scope here has a 30 millimeter aperture, but has a focal length of 120 millimeters. You would use the 120 millimeter value. It can be confusing because guide scope manufacturers often emphasize the aperture in their product information, but you may have to search for the product information to find the specification for the focal length. Before launching PhD, it's recommended you already have your mount and guide camera powered on and ready to connect via ASCOM. It will simplify entering some of the PhD setup data and ensure it's accurate. Now go ahead and launch PhD. If you are launching PhD for the very first time, it may prompt you with a first light wizard. 
Close this as we will walk through the new profile wizard, which is essentially the same thing. Click on the equipment connection button to bring up the equipment profiles window. It may again ask you to use the wizard, which we will dismiss. The connect equipment dialog box is where you both manage your equipment profiles and connect all your equipment when you are ready to guide. Under manage profiles, choose new using wizard. The first step is to select your guide camera. Choose the guide camera driver from the drop down list. If yours is not listed, you likely do not have the correct camera driver installed. Please go back and ensure all necessary software is installed prior to starting. When you choose your guide camera, it will ask you if you want to connect to it. Say yes and PHT will automatically connect to it and read the camera pixel size. You should verify this setting with the pixel size information you already have, or if for some reason PHD cannot read the pixel size, you can enter it manually here. If you happen to use two cameras from the same manufacturer, such as an imaging camera and a guide camera from ZWO, this can cause issues in the new profile wizard. Currently, the wizard does not allow you to select which camera you want to use during the new profile setup. If you do have two cameras from the same manufacturer, you should temporarily disconnect your imaging camera and connect only the guide camera for this step. Once you finish the new profile wizard, you can then reconnect your imaging camera. Two ZWO cameras is a common example of needing this approach. You can specify the binning of your guide camera in this step as well. For now, we recommend you leave it at bin one unless you have a specific reason to change this value. Next, enter your guide scope focal length. As mentioned before, if you're using an OAG, your imaging telescope focal length should be entered here. Click the next button to continue. For your mount, choose the Astrophysics GTO V2 mount driver. Again, PHD will ask if your mount is connected and we say yes. Your mount will connect and the guide speed will be updated. Please note the guide speed in PHD is always read only and can only be changed in the ASCOM driver, not in the PHD application. Astrophysics recommends the guide speed for their mounts always be left at 1x sidereal time. Do not enable any encoder options in this window. If you have an encoder mount, such as the Mach 2, please stop now and view the separate tutorial specifically for encoder mounts as they are configured and used differently in PHD. Click Next. If you have an adaptive optics unit, you can choose to enable it on this screen. However, for purposes of this introductory tutorial, we do not cover the details of using an AO unit. Click the next button. Name your profile something meaningful so that you can tell it apart from other profiles you may create in the future. Leave the Build Dark Library option checked as we will build the Dark Library next. Also check the Auto Restore Calibration. This option ensures the calibration you create and use will be automatically loaded every time you launch PHD application and is a benefit of using ASCOM and pulse guiding. Go ahead and click the Finish button. The Build Dark Library feature will now come up. Building a dark library for your guide camera is important to avoid guiding on hot pixels. You can stick with the default values and just click Start. PHD will prompt you to cover the telescope. You should ensure building a dark library is done at night and with no straight light able to hit the guide camera. Go ahead and click OK and it will start to build the dark library. In a few minutes, PHT will finish building the dark library and prompt you to uncover the guide scope. We have now have completed our building of the dark library. We will now set a few additional options to optimize PHD and minimize some common problems that may occur when using default values. Click the brain button to bring up the advanced setting dialog box, or you can also access this from the guide menu. You can choose your preferred language for PHD, but otherwise we are not going to make any changes to the default values in this global tab. 
Next, click the camera tab. We are going to increase our target SNR for auto exposures to 20. Otherwise, we leave all other default values and click the guiding tab next. Change the minimum star signal to noise ratio for auto find to 20. This will help avoid auto selecting dim stars for guiding. Confirm the minimum star half flux diameter is at least 1.5 pixels. This helps avoid choosing hot pixels in guiding. Finally, confirm auto restore calibration is in fact enabled. We will leave all other default values and click OK. Finally, we will click the connect equipment button just to ensure our camera and mount are connected. And now click the close dialog box. Now that we have set up PHD and connected all the equipment, our next step is to calibrate the guider. We will choose a baseline guiding of exposure of between two and four seconds. You can use other guiding exposures later to fine tune your guiding, but for now avoid very short or very long guide exposures. The first thing we need to do is slew the mount to an ideal sky location, which is typically the intersection of the meridian and the celestial equator. Fortunately, PHD has a built-in tool to easily find this location under Tools and Drift Align. Here we can use the default and simply click the slew button. This will slew the mount to that sky location. If you are unable to use this specific sky location due to obstructions or other reasons, you can use another part of the sky. In general, you want to calibrate at a sky position that is reasonably high in the sky, say around 45 degrees in altitude or more, and avoid areas around either pole. Once it's finished slewing, we can close this dialog box. Click the loop icon and the guide camera will start looping exposures. Next, click the auto select star. It's important to realize the best guide star may not look like the best choice visually, but PHD will choose the star that is best from a data standpoint. If you do not see any guide stars at this point, you can try to adjust the screen contrast slider, but remember, this is just a visual display and does not change the actual data. If you do not see any guide stars or no guide stars are auto selected, you may need to go back and recheck your guide camera focus. Next, we will bump the mount north to clear any deck backlash. PHD has another built-in tool that helps us to do this. This is under the tools menu under manual guide. Set the guide pulse duration to something longer like 3000 milliseconds or three seconds, and then click the north button. You should see the star move off the crosshair in the star profile window. If it does not, press north again until it does. At this point, you have cleared the backlash and are ready to calibrate. Again, press auto select guide star to recenter the guide star. Holding down the shift key on your keyboard, click the green start guiding button. Shift will cause PHD to start the calibration process. PHD will calibrate by moving the guide star in all four directions, measuring the distance and angle of movement. Although this detail is not critical, calibration is only measured in one direction on each axis, west and north. Once PHD is finished calibrating, if it was able to achieve a successful calibration, it will start guiding. If you encountered errors that prevent the calibration completion, these should be resolved before continuing. It probably goes without saying, but good guiding is dependent on a good calibration. A poor calibration will always degrade guiding results, so it's worth taking the time to get it right the first time. Next, we will use the guiding assistant to tune our guiding parameters for your specific scene condition. Launch Tools Guiding Assistant. The guiding assistant will disable guiding and watch the star position until you click stop. During this time, the guide star may move off the star profile screen or appear to drift dramatically. This is okay, provided it does not lose the guide star. If it does lose the guide star, you will need to start from looping again and reacquire another guide star. You want to run the guiding system only for a few minutes. 
The goal is to have the assistant recommend minimum move values for each access based on your equipment profile and scene conditions. For now, I like to disable measure declination backlash since we are only interested in setting our minimum move values for guiding. After a few minutes have elapsed, click stop. The guiding assistant will recommend minimum moves for each access and may also give additional information to you such as polar alignment, recommended exposure times, and so forth. Accept all the recommendations and close the guiding assistant. These recommendations are really designed as quick feedback to make sure things are reasonable in your setup. For example, polar alignment measurement at this point is not for you to fine tune your polar alignment. Rather, it's a sanity check to make sure your polar alignment isn't wildly off. Now PhD guiding is fully calibrated and ready for a night's session. Because we are using ASCOM and pulse guiding, you can use this one calibration for guiding anywhere in the sky. PhD knows your pointing position and can adjust its guiding parameters accordingly. You can continue to reuse this calibration as long as your guide camera does not shift or rotate position.